Welcome back to the channel guys. So in today's video of the Everything Expo series, we'll be learning how to manage location services in a React Native app. We'll see how we can ask the user for location permissions, and we'll also deal with common roadblocks, like what if the user had the location services turned off. Along with this, we'll also deal with app state management provided to us by React Native, which will help us detect when the user puts the application into the background, or when the user brings the application back to the active state again. We'll see how we can combine these two together that would make some practical use in a real world application. Here I have an empty React Native project that I created with the Expo and I've opened it up in Visual Studio Code. Let's start by going to the Expo documentation. Here we've been given an example on how to use the location services. So let's just copy out this code here and let's come back to our app and let's replace the code with that code. I'm going to save that and walk you through it. So here on top you can see that we're importing in constants, location, and permissions from Expo. We've set up an initial state, which sets the location to null and error message to null. In the component will mount, we first check if the platform is Android and if it's an Android emulator. If that's the case, then we're unable to access the location and we set up an error message which says that the location services will not work. Otherwise, if it's an actual device or even the iOS simulator, the this.getLocationAsync method is called. In this method, we use the permissions.async method to get the permissions for location. If the user denies that permission, we set an error message which sets the permission to access location was denied. Else, you can load the location in using the getCurrentPositionAsync method, which returns a location object, which we set on the state. So before I test this out, I've made sure that I've enabled the location services on my device. And then let's open up the app. When the app opens up, the first thing that we see is the dialog that asks for our permission. If we allow access, it gets the location object and it prints out the location. Well, this example assumes that the location services are always enabled. What if we go back out and disable the location services and try this out again? So let's first go into our settings. In our location settings, go inside Expo, go to the permissions and disable the location permission. Also come back out and switch off the location. Now let's come back to Expo and reopen our app. We'll go ahead and allow the location. As we see, we get an error here, is that location services are disabled. That means, though we provided location access, our location services are currently disabled. There should be a nicer way of telling the user to go ahead and enable location services. For that, what we'll do is, we'll come here in our getLocationAsync method and let's wrap this method in our try and catch block. So we'll say try and put in a catch which catches the error. So in case we have an error, what we can do is we can go ahead and check if the user has enabled their location services or not. For that, we can say let status is equal to location.getProviderStatusAsync and then we can check if the status.LocationServicesEnabled is false. We can show the user a button which will take the user to the settings and the user can enable their location services. For now, let's just put in an alert here. So I'm gonna take an example of an app that does require location services for it to work. In that case, a button will not be sufficient. Instead, I'd like to show a model that comes up that asks the user to enable their location. For that, let's install a plugin called React Native Model. So open up the terminal and say yarn add React Native Model. Once we have that installed, let's go ahead and import it in here. So we'll say import model from react native model. Here on top in our state, let's set a state which is is location model visible and set that to false. This is what will control the visibility of this model. Come down here, inside our render method in the return, let's pass in our model. So I'll say model and we set the visibility of the model using is visible and we set that to this.state.isLocationModelVisible, which is initially false. So when the app starts up, the model will be hidden. And inside this model, we'll pass in a view, which will help us style the model. We'll give it some basic styling. Let's give it a height of 300 and a width of 300, a background color of white, and we'll align item center and justify content center as well. Inside the view, I'll just put in one button which has a title of enable location services. 
and an on press method which updates the state to change is location model visible to false and we'll create another state called open settings and set that to true. So when enable location services is clicked, we'll hide the location model and we'll open the settings on the device. Let's go ahead and import button here on the top. Now let's come to our catch block where we're displaying the alert enable location services. Instead, we'll say this dot set state and we'll set the is location model visible to true. Now you see when the location services are not enabled, we get this model which tells the user to enable the location services. But before we test this out, let's come down here and in the model, let's put in another method called on model hide. This method is called once the model gets hidden. So as you remember, when we click enable location services, we're setting the is location model visible to false, which will cause it to hide and we're setting open settings to true. But we want the model to completely close before we go to the settings screen. So in our on model hide, we'll detect if this dot state dot open settings is true, then we we'll call the open setting method, which we'll just create. Otherwise just put in undefined. Now let's go ahead and create the open setting method. So come up here above our render. Let's create the method open setting. This should preferably be called open settings, but we'll let it be for now. And inside this, depending on the platform, we'll open up the setting screen. So for iOS, we need to import something known as a linking from React Native. And for Android, we need to import Intent Launcher Android from Expo. I'll come back to the open setting method. Here, we'll detect what platform it is. So we'll say if platform.os is equal equal to iOS, then we can say linking.openURL. And the URL we're looking for is app settings followed by a colon. Else, the platform has to be Android. And in that case, we'll say intent launcher Android dot start activity is sync. And inside that we'll say intent launcher Android dot action underscore location underscore source underscore settings. And once that's done, we'll say this dot set state and we'll set open setting to false. Now if we reload the app, we get our model which asks us to enable the location services. And if we click on it, we're taken to our location settings. There, we can go ahead and enable our location settings. And once we come back to our app, we see nothing happens. That's because we've just come back to our app. It's not like we've reloaded it again. How do we detect if the location services are enabled or not? Or what changes the user made? That's where app state comes in. So the last thing that we're left with now is to detect the app state. So come here on the top and import app state from React Native. And then we'll come to our component we'll mount and set up our app state listener. So we'll say app state dot add event listener. The listener that we're looking for is called change. And then we'll say this dot handle app state change which is a method we'll just create. So let's say handle app state change and we'll take one parameter called next app state. In the React Native documentation, we have an app state example mentioned in which we have a handle app state method. So we can copy this out. I'll put a link to this in the description and we can paste that inside our method. So all that does is it detects if the app state was inactive or background and if the next app state is active, then it console logs app has come to the foreground. So what we can do is we can check for the user's location here. So we can say this dot get location async and save that out. As we see, we're getting an error here. That's because we haven't set a default app state. So in our state, we'll say app state and we'll set that to app state dot current state. Now we save that out and reload our app. We see we're getting our location. We can quickly give that a try again by going into the settings and disabling the location, we can come back to our app. We see we get the enable location services model show up. We click on that. We're taken to our settings again. If we enable our location and go back to the app, we see we get an updated location. Also, whenever you add a listener, make sure to always remove it when the component unmounts. So we'll say component will unmount. And in that, just the way we added our app state change listener, we'll say app state dot remove event listener. Lastly, in our get location async method, where the user denies the location, we need to make sure that we end the method there by passing in a return, especially on iOS. Once a user denies the location access, 
The user must manually go into the settings and enable the location. You cannot prompt the user again. Or in fact, you should not prompt the user again for the location. So this covers handling location permissions in a React Native app. I tried to cover one of the common use cases. I hope this is useful to you and you guys try this out. And as always, thank you for watching.